So the power company ran over our sunchokes. Okay, I'm ready for our nature walk. What are we looking for? Hey, there's thimbleberry in here. You want to see? Um, I don't know if I can get back there with the dress on. This one tastes so good and the texture of it is fantastic. Let me show you guys what it looks like here. So here's the thimbleberry bush. And it's got some ripe ones like that one right there looking pretty tasty. And let's see how ripe it is here. It should just fall right off. Oh yes. Thimbles are like my new favorite berry. They're probably, I mean, a raspberry is the king, right? They're like amazing. But look at how the, the berry, when you pick it, it goes on your finger like it's a thimble. Ooh. You know what it's called? Thimbleberry. Thimbleberry. What? Yeah. There. The texture is like buttery. Hmm. It's not juicy, it's like butter. It's really amazing. While Jake is picking berries, I'm picking flowers. They smell so good. I love wildflowers. They're my fave. I should probably go help Jake pick some berries. <laughs> is that your favorite flower? One of them. I'm making a bouquet. Nice. Hey, so what kind of berries are in there? We have thimble berries and salmon berries so far. Different kinds of salmon berries. Yeah. Hopefully we'd find some raspberries. I don't know if the black cap raspberries are in season yet, but there's salal everywhere. It's just not ready yet. It's just almost ready. Like we're talking a few weeks away. And I also found some huckleberries. So we're going to go down and find this huckleberry bush I saw off the road. Ooh. Yeah. You know, even though I was born in BC, I didn't, um, I really kind of grew up in the deserts of Arizona, so I'm kind of finding out more of the native edibles around here kind of as an adult. So this guy, I don't know the exact type of this berry, but I'm pretty sure it's edible, so I'm gonna just eat it and see. <laughs> oh my God, that's so not safe. Oh, it's so delicious, oh my gosh. Okay, now you're gonna die. There's no chance. I'm gonna go home and be a nerd and look at my book. <laughs> I'll find what it is. Okay. But these are dark and they're amazing. They look like the cousin of thimble. Hmm. Yeah. These, honestly, I haven't um, eaten any black cap raspberries yet. I didn't know they were in season yet, but we might have just found black cap raspberries. Well, I think you take them with you, look in the book, and then I'll eat one. They're an amazing color. Like, the colors in this bowl, you should zoom in on this. It's really amazing. Zooming. You gotta hold the bowl still and point it towards oh, me. Sorry. There you go. Ooh, wow. Look at all those colors. Looking pretty. All the edible berries, whether it's the black caps or the thimbles or the salmon berries, they all love the uh, like clearings when like a road has been put in and there's like a clearing. I mean, I wish you guys can zoom in on this closer. This is honestly so beautiful right now. It looks like a sunset, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And over here, um, it's gonna be a separate video, maybe, maybe next time. I'm gonna do a video on um, my first experience cooking up red elderberry see these guys right here this is elderberry and apparently all parts of the plant are poisonous like the root the stem the branches the leaves all poisonous but the berries you don't want to eat raw but the native peoples here the first peoples they would um, cook them up into like a paste and then make fruit leathers out of them and they would store them in skunk cabbage leaf tightly wrapped up in skunk cabbage and they put it in the river and they would keep for months and they would just go to the river and they would take out chunks of this fruit leather when they wanted to eat it. So I'm gonna do that starting tomorrow.
This is like beautiful. It's like every stage of Thimbleberry right here. Check this out. These guys are hard to pick though, because they um they just are very buttery. That's all I can I can describe them. So like if you're not totally like this one is just literally turning into juice in my hands. I would normally just eat this one, but I'm gonna save it so that at the end we can kinda of lay them all out and see what we got. But oh. mm -hmm. that's good. So Jake and I finally found some ripe salal berries. There's a whole salal bush. And these ones look ripe. They probably can get more ripe and the season in a couple of weeks, but those ones look Yeah, they feel they feel pretty squishy. Honestly, this is really in your hand, squishy. let's see. They kinda look like mini apples. I think those need like an extra couple days, but let's try them out and see. Should we try one? Try it, let's see. Or if I die. You won't. That was alright. It actually didn't taste like it wasn't ripe, like it doesn't taste tart. Hmm. Yeah. But I probably one more week it would have been juicier, I'm guessing. The plan is is that we're taking about one acre of the property as the fruit tree orchard and raised bed garden. It's gonna be epic. And you guys who are following us now, hope you guys like our videos because they're gonna get a lot better when our uh, mega food forest begins. The plan is is to fence in the one acre of fruit tree orchard and garden to have athletic dogs to have cats inside the garden that are like protectors of the garden from pests or martens things like that but then to fence it in so that cougar deer and bear and wolf cannot get in we're going to power a 12 volt battery with a solar panel and do an electric fence around it as well and on the outside of the fence uh, the outside of the one acre all these berries we're going to plant these native berries everywhere around the entire fence so that nature gets to, to eat, we get to eat, and a deer or a cougar or a bear would have to go through a thicket of thorns just to get to the fence, just to go over, and they won't do that. So the fence would be really high. That's our plan, so it's kind of like multiple layers of protection before somebody would get into the garden. So that concludes our nature slash berry picking walk. Were we successful? Yeah, we got a bowl of berries, six or seven different kinds, but let's go inside the yurt and we'll lay them out and show them what we got, different varieties. All right. This is a beautiful day for a walk. You look beautiful today. Look at this dress she's wearing. Thank you. And Jess, look at this. You look so nice. Thanks. It's actually warm enough for me to wear my clothes. Nice. <laughs> as long as we keep walking, no bugs can get us. Yes, which is really nice. So, all right, let's okay. go inside the yurt. All right, super jealous of all my friends in India and Hawaii who have banana leaves. So out here in the Pacific Northwest, we have um, skunk cabbage leaves. All right, piece of skunk cabbage, and here's what we got. So check it out. Let me get you guys in here nice and close. First is the classic. This is the famous salmon berries, all different colors. Look at the different colors. The darker ones, the lighter ones, the ones that are in transition. These are all ripe, but they're all different colors. It's really amazing. And this one is my new favorite. I just discovered the thimbleberry. And the texture of these guys is buttery and creamy and really incredible. Behind the thimbleberry is the huckleberry. These are the red huckleberries. And the first thing that I thought of when I saw these guys was it looks like, like fish food. You would put on a fish hook if you were gonna go trout fishing or whatever. And then below it, we did find the black cap raspberries. Easily 95% of them still weren't ripe yet. So this is the very beginning of the season, but these guys are so delicious and I think between the thimble berries and the black cap raspberries are my two favorites. And then just for scale, we have um, some raspberries, some more traditional raspberries and Logan berries that were growing in the community garden. Um, it's really cool how all the members do like a you pick where you can leave a little donation for the community garden. And they've got some red currants, black currants, clear currants, Logan berries, and raspberries just all grown there as a hedge. And I really hope that we can grow as epic of a harvest here at Blackfish in the year coming up. I'm gonna say right here that the thimbleberries and the black calf raspberries are my two favorites and I'm gonna turn it to Nicole and see what her favorite is. Okay, what's your favorite? Raspberries. Those don't count because they're from the community garden. <laughs> they're so good. Of the wild berries. Um, I like the thimbleberries. Really? Why? 
if I could put them on my finger. <laughs> I don't eat them like that. Nice. No. It tastes like a raspberry, but not as sweet as a raspberry. Like a raspberry is really sweet. It's a little bit more chill and mellow, but the texture is really fun. The texture is, it's like soft and mushy. Like you said, like butter, it just like kind of melts and dissolves on your tongue. The salmon berries are not really my favorite. Um, they just don't really have any flavor. Or, they generally don't taste like anything. It's just kind of like water that bursts in your mouth. Here, eat. Uh, this one is super mega ripe. So eat that one and tell me if that one has no flavor. Okay. Okay, that one does, but... Oh, still. No, I don't <laughs> like it. I, like, I like it, it has flavor, but I don't know. It's not my favorite. Hmm. Um, you can tell that humans have been nurturing raspberries, loganberries for generations and generations and generations. Yeah. The loganberries are pretty good. I just... The raspberries are my fave. Mm. And strawberries. Mm -hmm. And blueberries. But that's not wild. I know. So You're I would say thimbleberries are my favorite, and then these black cap raspberries are my second for wild because these are really good too. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. The shadows are crazy on my face right now. Um, new day here on Blackfish Hollow, the farm, the homestead, whatever you want to call it. So my project for today is making a garbage can. I don't want to go out and buy a plastic garbage can, but Jake and I have just been using boxes and I need it to look a little bit more organized. We don't really have that much trash, honestly, because we recycle so much stuff. Like what is really awesome about this community is they're so big on recycling and like they make fun of you if you bring a big garbage bag full of crap. They're really big into recycling. So I need to make a bin for recycling and then one for stuff that can't be recycled. And then Jake and I compost like crazy, like we compost everything so I really, we really don't need that big of a garbage can and then I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to, what I'm going to use for a liner. So obviously I can't haul this, my future garbage can with me to the dump every time into the recycling. So I need to figure out if I'm going to reuse like, use a reusable liner, a cotton liner, something in it to be able to take out, dump, and then maybe clean out or something. I'm not sure. I haven't figured that out yet, but I do need something to hold it in. So here I have a used chicken crate. I think chickens were in this. We got this at the, the recycling community thing. Someone was getting rid of it and I was like, oh, I'll use that for something. I'm not really gonna film me making this because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'll show you guys the finished product, but I think I'm just gonna take this crate and cut it in half, use one for recycling, one for trash, because again, we don't need it to be that big. We really don't have that much trash. So I might show a little progressive steps along the way and show you guys how I'm doing because I still really don't know what I'm doing <laughs> so I'm learning so yeah so um, I'm gonna make a trash can and hopefully hopefully it turns out okay I don't know <laughs> with the help of Jake. Jake had to step in and help me so I'm getting a little frustrated, but he came up with a great idea how to support it a little bit more. But really honestly, you guys, this is just, this is something that we'll probably burn later on in the future, but it's just us practicing and the next one we do will be even better and then the next one after that will be even better. Um, but here we have just, um, just a sturdy little box. You know, we put big cut sticks on the side, which was a really good idea to make it a little bit more sturdy. So yeah, that's it. And um, what I was thinking for a liner is uh, we have one of these bags. And because um, we don't really have, nothing wet is gonna go in here because we compost everything so there's no food or anything. It'll just be like the trash that we can't recycle. 
will go in here. So I'll just take this, dump it at the dump whenever we end up going, and then I can always just wipe this down and clean it and then reuse it. So I think this will work and it'll fit really nicely in here. Show you here. So just fit in there like that. And we have a trash can. Now I was gonna make a second one for recycling, but it might be too big and too bulky, so I'm not sure. I'm gonna think of something for that. But anyway, in the meantime, I'm gonna make something for lunch. I'm hungry and I'm not sure what that's gonna be, so. Hey guys, wanted to give you a garden update on how our off-grid garden is growing. If you guys remember, we first got here and took advantage of the community garden that a lot of the locals that have acreages of their own, um, some of them choose to be a part of the community garden. So Nicole and I both got a bed each, and then we had a couple of neighbors um, offer to reserve a bed themselves if we just took care of it to support the community garden. This community garden is fantastic. They do a great job. And not only do we have edibles growing in our raised beds that I want to show you right now how they're looking, but I also want to show you some of the community things that are growing here that they have a you pick for. So they have this old post office building that's from like the 1800s and they've turned it into the garden shed and they have a little mailbox over there. You can put a little donation to the garden and then do a little you pick and they've got some amazing things to pick, especially berries. So hey, I want to give a shout out to my friends at Pina Styles for this amazing shirt that has some of the native trees of the Pacific Northwest here. And um, we got some of the native fauna, some of the native eagle going on, the cool eagle. This is an amazing row all the way down the row. Um, the locals here over the years, for many years, have planted an amazing array of berries. And we start right here with these Logan berries. There are so many cool things about the acreage that Nicole and I are living on here. And one of the coolest things is the community garden. I really love this place and I hope we can take um, a couple of little cuttings of these berries, like little guys, just to plant in our garden because they're such amazing specimens. We got a little basket. We're going to try to put a little assortment together and um, if you guys stick around to the end of the video, We'll show you Nicole's and my raised bed, see who won the contest between Nicole and I, and show you guys some of the bounty that we picked today. Check out down the row. We're gonna go to the next one. Got some beautiful Jerusalem artichokes, sunchokes in their own raised bed, their own area. We got this really nice plant of black currants. So if the black currants weren't your weren't your thing, you can go down a little bit further and find the white currants. These guys look almost like little frog eggs or fish eggs. These are my personal favorite. If we go on a little further, we have the red currant bush right next door. And these red currants are a little tart, like the black one. So I would say the red currants, we do eat them fresh, but I would say most gardeners should probably look into either drawing them or making them into jams, or maybe pies, things like that. So we're learning what grows here really well. Kale grows like a weed. There's red Russian kale just everywhere like a weed, everywhere you go, and microgreens, full plants, we're gonna have unlimited kale chips coming up. And then we have the raspberry plot. It looks like a couple different species of raspberries. I want you guys just to gawk at this amazing, amazing area. These guys have been nurtured for years and they just look so good. And I've been kind of trying to go down to where there's really ripe ones. And there's probably 10,000 raspberries on this plant here. That look perfect. Good God, very good. I think there's no words I can't even describe. Those are really good. The raised beds in the and I've been tending are an experiment. We planted a ton of different kinds of plants to see which ones did well, which ones didn't. We wanted to see what kind of weeds popped up. We didn't even amend the soil that much. We brought in some of the forest soil. We laid seaweed out there, but we didn't really bring in heavy compost or worm castings or coconut core or rock minerals and really inoculate these beds. So. We kind of wanted to see what they would do with just minimal weeding and care and planting and minimal amendments. So this bed was the neighbor's bed that we planted just some sunflowers in, some onions, some squash and zucchini, and nasturtiums. All different colors of nasturtiums do really well. And if we pan over here, you're gonna see Nicole's raised bed, which did really well. And so is it because of Nicole? Is it because she lucked out and got the good bed? I'm not quite sure. It could be because of Nicole. But Nicole totally wins the garden contest. I totally lose the fitness contest and the garden contest. Um, because if we walk this way a little further, we'll see my bed, which got overrun by this certain kind of weed. My bee balm or borage did really well. The kale, of course, does well. 
and, and my rhubarb did okay. But Nicole had a couple of small strawberries in this bed and she did a really good job weeding them and thinning them out and pruning them. And now she has an abundance of strawberries. Every day she's been coming out and picking all these strawberries from her bed. So I'm gonna turn it over to Nicole right now and she can tell you guys what her secret is, what she thinks is doing really well. You guys can see her harvesting some of these delicious strawberries. You made a great job on the garden. Thanks. Honestly, I mean, I was really lucky with the bed because the person who owned this previously had strawberries, potatoes, they had a lot of stuff in this bed, so it's just luck, honestly. Um, my secret, it's, it's love. It's, I mean, I gave it a lot of love too. I mean, I, we'll give it more love when we have our own raised beds. We just kind of threw a bunch of stuff out, so there is a lot of weeds and we're still experimenting, so. You look really fantastic today. Where's this top from? That top looks really good on you. Thank you, I don't know, I got it in Tofino. It's from Tofino. Dofino. Local clothes. Um, my secret with the strawberries is whoever had this bed last year, they just came back from last year, so I didn't plant them. I did clean them up when we first got everything ready, so I mean, maybe that helped, but it's because whoever planted them last year, they came back and they came back strong. So we've just been getting tons of strawberries, and the strawberries are almost done. You can just tell that they're producing their last little bit. They still have a little bit coming, and then strawberry season will be over. But it but looks like everywhere in our area is just blackberries are ready to pop. Oh yeah, I will definitely gonna take some of these runners and um, plant them in my own bed so I have this variety because this variety produces huge strawberries, so. And delicious. And so, so And abundant. Mouth-watering delicious. Like we've had so many strawberries and next year for sure we'll do jams. This year we were just experimenting. We don't really have a full thriving kitchen yet. So next year we'll do jams and I mean so much more with, with our stuff. So we've just been enjoying it and eating all of it. <laughs> How about your herbs in your in their standalone pots at the end of your bed? Yeah, check it out. Rosemary's been doing pretty good. Um, it hasn't really like flourished quite yet. My lavenders, this variety of lavender is doing really good. It's starting to produce a little lavender at the top. And then the mint, oh, I must go backwards. The mint is doing excellent. I mean, the mint is just like taking off. We have regular mint, spearmint, pineapple mint. This one right here, and then we have chocolate mint, which is delicious. I'm actually drying some out right now to make some chocolate tea, like a chocolate tea blend. We have the other variety of lavender, which I don't know the name of this one because I don't have the tag in here anymore. But I've been taking tons of the little lavenders off of here, making our own tea with it, and a bunch of other stuff. And then we have our sage, and then we have our snapdragons right there. That's it. Look at how much kale is inside your bed right here at the, at the base. I know, there's so much kale. There's also some chamomile, borage, nasturtium, yeah. What did you find? Oh my gosh, an abundance of raspberries and Logan berries. So we're just pulling out one little basket here for the two of us and... Yeah, there's so many. It's just really important to grow your own food because you're picking these raspberries at the height of ripeness. So good. Mm -hmm. So your first proper gardening experience, one full season. Yes. <laughs> How do you feel that it went? I think it went really well. I'm excited. I love coming up here and like picking a bunch of stuff. I got lavender, I got mint for tea and nasturtiums because we'll probably just eat them throughout the day and some chamomile. And I, we got a little bit of raspberries. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it though, it's great. I love gardening. It's like a supermarket in your backyard. I mean, there are fish everywhere. If they all gang up on me, they can take me out for sure. You gonna get in? Woo! Bye. Uh, no! Oh. I'm gonna get chopped up with my belly. <laughs> all right. What is it? It's actually warm, it's nice. That's it's not lie. cold, the moon's up there. There's a school of fish all around me. I've never heard anybody talk about sharks. 
The only thing that's scary is the orca. <laughs> Maybe a seal. Can I get back up in the striker? Come on. All right, let's go. <laughs> in the next episode of Jake and Nicole Off Grid, I try out our new wash machine. Plus, we get our lumber for our bathroom and much, much more. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.